St. John chapter 9, verse 1. Jesus passed by. He saw a man that was blind from his birth. His disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? I'm not preaching on that subject, but I love this passage right here. Because sometimes people want to say, if you got something wrong in your life, it must be sin that caused it. And Jesus just answered that real abruptly, saying, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I'm the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he sped on the ground, made clay of the spittle, anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. He went his way and washed and came seeing. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for the word of God. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light to our path. Lord, your word has promised us that it will go forth and it will accomplish and it will prosper where it is sent. And we decree that today in the house of the Lord in your name. Amen. Hallelujah to God. It was, it was back during COVID about a year and a half ago or two years ago as just reading and uh, uh, just reading uh, the word of the Lord, and th this line just got in my spirit from verse number one, just these words, Jesus passed by. <clears throat> you read all of that, and all of a sudden, all I saw was Jesus passed by. So when Jesus passed by, great things happen. When Jesus just like the young lady talked, when Jesus passed by, he brings a life-changing experience. Hallelujah to God. When Jesus passed by, you know, with all the stuff going on in the colleges and stuff, we got all this negative stuff going on about it. And I'm like, just leave it alone and let God be God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus even told us he, uh, a man sowed seed in three places it went and didn't do any good. But one place that it went, it brought forth fruit. So I'm trusting in the one place, and I have enough confidence if he passes by, he's going to make something happen. Hallelujah. Everybody may not get it, but somebody's going to get it. There might be another Billy Graham in the making somewhere. Hallelujah. Jesus passed by, and of course, in this passage I read to you, he healed a blind man. I don't recommend doing what he did, but he's Jesus. He can do what he wants. Spit on the ground, make a little clay, put it in the eye. The EPA might get on you if he'd mess with that or something or other. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. But as looking through the scriptures, as let every word be established a couple of times, he says. And in Matthew, I found this little passage, chapter 9, it said, And Jesus passed by the tax office. Don't say those words, but that's where he went. Jesus passed by, and, and, and there was a man named Matthew who was the tax collector. And when Jesus came by the tax office, by the government's office, he can find you no matter where you are. And when he passed by, he said to Matthew, come and follow me. And it was so powerful. He never heard a voice like that before. It was so powerful that he got up from his tax receiving table uh, and he turned it all aside and followed Jesus. He didn't ask him, where are you going? Where am I going to eat my next meal? Uh, what does the future look like for us? Uh, he just said, this voice is so powerful. Uh, even the scribes and Pharisees said, ain't nobody talks like he talks. Uh, when he talks, uh, amen, you listen. And when Jesus passed by, point is, he called him from a work of just secular work, but he called him into the kingdom of God, translated him from a world of darkness into the marvelous light of God. When Jesus passed by, something supernatural happened in Matthew's life. Just one experience. You say, is that all it takes? That's all it took for me. Glory to God. Been 50 years ago and ain't changed that yet. Hallelujah to God. Jesus passed by. In the book of St. Luke, I found this. Chapter 17, chapter 18, chapter 19, chapter 17. And Jesus was going to Jerusalem, but on his way he passed through Samaria. Just passing through. 
Hallelujah. Not, 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 no spectacular thing I'm going to be doing today. I'm just passing by. And while he's passing by, there were ten lepers who stood afar off. When the Lord gave me this, this, this message, and I began to look at that, when I saw that who stood afar off, uh, we was right in the middle of pandemic, and churches don't know what to do, and people don't know what to do, and God said to me, you're not the only generation who had social distancing. It's been around before. Ten lepers who were, by the law, could not socialize. So they were commanded to social distance. Stay away from people. Stay out of the shopping mall. Stay out of the nursing home. Stay out of the hospital. Stay out of the funeral home. Stay away from your people. But that don't stop Jesus. When he's passing by, I must work the works of him that sent me. And when you can't see him working, he's still uh, about his father's business. Whoa, hallelujah. And when Jesus was passing by, ten lepers stood afar off and they couldn't get close to him. Hallelujah. Some preachers are like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Do what Jesus did. The Roman centurion said, I believe if you just speak the word, uh, everything will be all right. Uh, I believe if you just open your mouth, uh, you created the heavens and the universe. Uh, if you just open your mouth, oh, hallelujah. And the lepers screamed out to him, uh, Oh, thou son of David, how merciful see on us and he replied to them go show yourself to the priest because the priest had to make a declaration of their healing and as they turned and walked away they were healed as they went what caused all this because Jesus was just passing by bringing a life changing experience what are you doing today I'm just passing around where are you going? I don't know. I'm just passing by. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm just, I ain't got no particular schedule. I'm just passing by. Hallelujah. Chapter 18. During this same process, Luke chapter 18. And Jesus came nigh to Jericho. And as he was coming into town, there was a man named Blind Bartimaeus, recognized as that, who sat outside the city begging for alms, and had been doing it for years. Begging for alms, begging for a way of living, begging for a way of life. But on this particular day, he had never heard so much traffic. On this particular day, he heard many passing by. And he said, what is all the commotion about? Somebody tell me what is going on. I hear lots of people. Uh, I, I, I've been sitting here a long time, and I never heard so many people at one time. What is taking place? Uh, and somebody replied these words, uh, Jesus of Nazareth uh, is passing by here. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth uh, is passing by. Whoa, hallelujah to God. And that just done something to his spirit uh, said I ain't never met the man uh, but I heard that he passed uh, and, and, and he raised Jairus his daughter from the dead uh, I heard that he passed by and a news has been around town uh, that a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years uh, touched the hem of his garment uh, when he was just passing by uh, oh he was just passing by and he fed the multitude when they didn't have money to buy lunch he created the world's largest fish fry hallelujah when he was just passing by he's up to something this morning church today might be we gather every week in God's house we've been doing it for years but you don't ever know when Jesus is going to supernaturally come passing by and pick you out of a horrible place and set your feet on a solid rock hallelujah Glory passed by the tax office and called a man to the work of God. Passed by the lepers, the outcasts, the downtrodden, the throwaway, the forsaken, the given up, and reached out to the outcast. Passed by the blind. I, I believe Bartimaeus stood up, said, Hey! 
Jesus, our son of David. Somebody said, y'all not holler so loud. You don't know what I need. I've been dealing with this all my life, and today I feel like there's some help in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. feel like there's some help in the house. Everybody else done told me I can't help you, but I feel like somebody's showing up that can help me this morning. Hey, thou son of David, have mercy. Oh, Jesus, stop and say, come here. Bring him to me. He said, what do you want from me? He said, I want to receive my sight. And you know what Jesus said? Thy faith has made thee whole because you screamed a little louder, because you praised a little louder, because you worshiped a little louder, because you stood on your feet and got my attention. Hallelujah. What are you doing? I'm just passing by is what I'm doing. Just think what would happen if he came on a purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah, this is just an accident. If I came on a purpose, I'd turn the world upside down. Hallelujah. Chapter 19, as he entered into Jericho, he was coming into Jericho and he passed by blind Bartimaeus. Now he entered into Jericho and a multitude came. They done heard about Bartimaeus outside the city. Now they done got more folk. Big crowd of people going down the street. And in the midst of that crowd was a rich man, a little man, about four foot five. About a size six cowboy boot. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the crowd was so big he couldn't get in. But he was hungry. But he was thirsty. And Jesus done made a promise. If you're hungry and you're thirsty, you shall be filled. <laughs> Hallelujah. It don't matter where you come from, what you what your roots are, your pedigree, uh, what your size is. If you're hungry, he'll make a way. If you're hungry, he'll make a way. Uh, Zacchaeus said, I don't know. I'll never get to that crowd. But he looked, there's a sycamore tree uh, and I'm going to climb that tree because read the scripture. Uh, verse 4, I think it is, and he said, uh, because he knew that Jesus was going to pass this way. Uh, hallelujah. Because I know uh, he's coming down that aisle uh, and I'm going to get ready. Because uh, I know I'm going to climb up this tree uh, and when he comes under this tree uh, I may not be able to touch him but I'll be so close uh, I'll feel the very virtue uh, coming out of his life but to his surprise uh, when Jesus passed by he stopped dead in his tracks uh, said Zacchaeus uh, come down out of that tree uh, if you're hungry uh, if you're thirsty uh, if you're sick of sin uh, and you're sick of this world uh, if you're drawn out of him uh, he'll draw out of you Hallelujah. My kind of man invited himself to lunch. Didn't he do it? Zacchaeus, come on down today. I'm going to your house. Hope you got roast cooking. Hallelujah. I'm going to your house today. Hallelujah. But on top of that, today, son, salvation has come to your house. I'm not only going to eat at your table, but I am pardoned to you the very bread of life. Whew, hallelujah. What are you doing? I'm just passing through Jericho. Just taking my time. Since I'm here, uh, come on out of that tree. I want to save somebody since I'm here. I want to witness to somebody since I'm at the hospital. Hallelujah. Just passing by. In Acts chapter 19. And Paul, passing through the upper coast, just passing through, coming to Ephesus, 
just passing through. See, you don't always have to be on a mission. My steps are ordered of the Lord. Even when I woke up this morning and acknowledged him, and if I acknowledge him, he will direct my path and order my steps when I'm just passing through. <clears throat> Woo! Sister Robbie and I was in, in, in St. Louis and it was storming real bad and after church we the pastor owned the business. He had to get up real early. I told him, go on, we'll, we'll take care of ourselves. So we go to Cracker Barrel and it was storming. We was in there about 30 minutes and nobody ever waited on us so I left. And I drove straight across the street to IHOP. Straight across the street to IHOP. So we go in IHOP and ain't nobody in there. It's storming really bad. So we go in there and they see this young girl waits on us. What are we doing? I done been to church. I'm just looking for something to eat. I ain't looking to be spiritual. I'm just looking for some Rudy Tootie fresh and fruity. <laughs> I don't know nothing about iPods and iPads, but iHop I'm real familiar with. <laughs> Hallelujah. The girl that attended our church for years was the manager at iHop in Tyler, and I never paid for a meal. I went there often. <laughs> anyway, we ordered, got her food, and this young girl that waited on us was back there crying and Anyway, I heard her crying and sobbing, and she left, and, and, and uh, I thought she left, but I told Robbie I'm going to the restroom, so I start in the restroom. She's coming out of the restroom. She's coming out of the girls. I'm going in the boys. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when she's coming out and I'm going in, hey amen, this girl's got tears rolling down. She's boo-hooing. And I'm just passing by. But all of a sudden, I felt a unction from the Holy One. When I'm just passing by, I stopped like, Zacche like Jesus looking up a tree. Put both my hands on a total stranger's shoulders. Tears rolling down her face. And the words come out of my mouth. Young lady, today's the best day of your life. God sent an old bald-headed preacher all the way from Texas to come by your way to lay hands on you and declare your life is going to change right now. Hallelujah. Then she really started crying. I started praying, speaking in tongues. What are you doing, Leon? I'm just passing by. It ain't on my agenda, but when something happens, God's looking looking for somebody that got an answer and brings a solution to somebody's life. We just, Jesus just passing by, went by the tax office. Matthew, come follow me. Hallelujah. Blind Bartimaeus, Jesus just passing by. He got something more than money could buy. He didn't never have to set and beg for alms another day. Laid down his arm pan. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. I don't know if it was the offering of the prayer, but that girl was happy when I left IHOP. Hallelujah. Probably a little bit of both. Amen. Hallelujah. I love giving waitresses a $100 tip sometimes when I can afford it. It does something more than all your words can ever say. Y'all got quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. And Paul passing by, coming to Ephesus, and he heard some boys in a conversation. That's talking about John the Baptist. So he said, pardon me. 
Have y'all got the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, we don't know what you're talking about. Kind of like the young man the lady was witnessing to. Don't know what you're talking about. See, you live in America, but everybody ain't heard of Jesus. And a lot of folks ain't heard about the Holy Ghost. What they did here, y'all handle snakes. Seen it on prime time in 2020. That wasn't me, I can promise you that. I went to a snake church one time. Really did. One on 2020. I've been there at that church. A friend of ours was singing and we was just passing by and she talked us into going and we sat on the back row. <laughs> they didn't bring out the snakes that night. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Every snake I ever seen growing up, he was a dead one. <laughs> Paul said, have you guys received the Holy Ghost? We ain't never even heard. Well, I'm just passing through, but this is a great opportunity to stop and tell you about this Holy Ghost. You see, I was on the road to Damascus, and I done killed lots of folks in this way, but a light from heaven shined upon my life. It was bright. Next day, a man named Ananias laid his hands on me three days later, and my eyes was opened up. Hallelujah. I was filled with the whole. I got to tell you about this Holy Ghost. I got to tell you this Holy Ghost is real. I got to tell you he that speaketh in an unknown tongue talks unto God who understands every language. Thank God for a language the devil don't understand. Because when I speak in tongues, oh, hallelujah to God. What are you doing, so Paul? I'm just passing through, but I got to tell you about it. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah, and about 12 of them got the Holy Ghost when he was just passing by. I've done more stuff just passing by than I've ever done planning. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've planned on how to get in big churches. I've planned on how to make contacts with big ministries. Don't shout me down now. I've planned because that's what my daughter said I needed to do and told me how to do it because she's an entrepreneur and she'll tell you how to do all this stuff by formula. But I've stumbled on and just fell into more stuff than all the stuff that ever happened to me planning on it. Just passing by. Whew. One time I got on an airplane. I was passing from somewhere in Pennsylvania to DFW get my seat by the window, get my Bible. Don't worry, be happy. Just take it easy. A couple of hours, we'll be there. Everything's cool. This young lady sat by me. Not right by me, but the set seat over. She was real friendly, started talking about my daughter's age. And I'm an introvert personality. I don't even talk to people. Most of the time, I don't even like people. How have you ever made it in the ministry just passing by? <laughs> so she strikes up a conversation and then she told me she worked for this company and my wife happened to work for the same company. So I knew a little bit what she was talking about. So we got in this big conversation. So we talked and we talked and we talked and finally she said, what do you do? I said, well, I travel around the country preaching in different churches, telling people about Jesus. She said, who's that? I'm just passing by. Stumbled up on somebody who don't know who Jesus is. So for the next hour and a half till we land at DFW, I tell her about Jesus. Took the young lady to her connection flight. She'd never been DFW, and I'm familiar with it, so I escorted her to her next flight. Have a good day. Never see you again. God bless you. A few weeks later, she sent me a private message, Brother Dave. She said, I don't know why I'm reaching out to you. I don't, I don't, 
I don't even know what's going on in my life, but I'm planning on getting married, but I'm an alcoholic. And the first thing I do every morning is drink. And I don't know what to do because I don't want to get married with this problem. And my fiance don't know this. So I, I learned to type in high school as a freshman, the only boy in 35 girls class. <laughs> Got about three that know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I type her a message, start telling her about Jesus again. Go to a church. God will help you and God will deliver you. So when we got through, then I put out a message immediately to all my friends on Facebook. Uh, pray for this person that's a friend of mine that that has alcohol problem and needs deliverance. And she's seen all that. And within 15 minutes, I had about 50 people respond. We're praying for that person. I didn't tell them male or female. We just pray, and everybody's praying. Next morning, she sent me a message. How come so many people are praying about somebody they don't even know? Because we're all just passing by. <laughs> looking for somebody to help out along this way. We're just, what are you doing today? I'm just passing by. Hallelujah. About a week went by and she sent me another message and said, I totally don't understand what's going on. This makes absolutely no sense to me. But I woke up this morning with no desire for alcohol whatsoever. Hallelujah. I don't even know what's going on. All because God sent us somewhere just passing by. We don't even know what we're doing, where we're going. Hallelujah. It's beyond our plans. It's beyond. We're just passing through Jericho. We're just passing through Samaria. We're not going to stop. We're just passing through. But since I'm here, I'm going to be a yielded vessel and allow the Holy Ghost to move in my life. Hallelujah. I too was forsaken by my mom. Dropped me off at my grandparents when I was five years old. Didn't see her for years. In the meantime, mom got married about 15 times. 12 times really, to be exact. 12 times. Had 12 stepfathers, didn't like none of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Life was a wreck. When I was 17 years old, I moved out of home and had my own place and my own job. And I mean, let me tell you, teenagers, if you get a job and work 60 hours a week, you won't have time to get in trouble. All you want to do is go home and go to bed by yourself. <laughs> Don't shout me down now. I was with a guy the other day and he was talking about he was married twice. He wasn't married very long both times. Was both his wives left him for another man. I said, well, praise God she didn't leave for another woman. <laughs> but at 17 years old, in, a, in an RV, renting, paying my own rent, buying my own car, paying my own car, paying my own Electric bill, my own water bill, my own gas bill, buying my own tires. Don't shout me down now. 17 years old, a senior in high school, working 60 hours a week. Hallelujah to God. And Jesus passed by. At 3 in the morning, a messed up, deranged teenage boy. I sat straight up in the bed. I didn't know the Bible said this, but with hair like wool and eyes like fire, he burned into my very being. He never opened his mouth. He never said one word. Hallelujah. But then my eyes spoke volumes into the very depths of my being. I don't have the words in the vocabulary to tell you, but when Jesus passed by that day, I've never forgot it. And from that day forward, it changed my life. And a few weeks later, a, a man named Bob Harrington, the chaplain of Bourbon Street, 
from New Orleans, Louisiana, world-renowned Baptist preacher, was in Tucson, Arizona in a convention. I went to that convention. I don't know what he said. I ain't got a clue. I can't remember. All I know is I was way up in the balcony, and when he got through, I come down them stairs, lickety-split, down to the front, throwed up my hands. Hallelujah. To God. It's been 50 years ago, and I'm telling you, when Jesus passed by, he will forever change your life. When Jesus passes by, he will sow that seed on some good ground that will take root, bring forth fruit, and that fruit shall remain. He passed by the tax office. Matthew followed Jesus and became a martyr for Christ. Hallelujah. He'll change your life. Blind Bartimaeus, Jesus healed. The ten lepers, the outcasts, Jesus reached out and touched their life. Hallelujah. Closing with this. Exodus 34, Moses came off the mountain from fasting. Church had backslid. God told him, said, I want you to hew out your two stones and I'm going to rewrite these commandments for you. Come up on the mountain. Bring your stones. I'm going to rewrite them for you. And I think it's verse 6 or 7, 34. And the Lord, and a cloud descended, and the Lord passed by. Declaring five things to Moses. The Lord God is gracious, merciful, long-suffering. See, there's some folks you give up on, but God. He'll go get them. He'll just pass right by the honky-tonk. Stroll right up in there. Long suffering. And I love this right here. And the Lord is abundant in goodness and truth. Five things Jesus told Moses. When I pass by, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be merciful to you. I'm going to be gracious to you. I'm going to be long suffering. And I'm going to open up heaven. And I'm going to be good to you. If you just follow me, your mind cannot comprehend all that's going to happen good for you. 